All right, welcome back to a new Dutch Designer tutorial. And this is part of the tips, tricks, and FAQ series. And this is one of the questions I probably get asked most often. And it's just about like how you can make anything audio reactive. And because of the way Touch Designer is structured with the different um, operator families, especially chops and, and tops, um, we can export any channel to any parameter really. So um, I just want to show you a few ways how you can like tackle different situations that you might want to make uh, audio reactive. So basically um, meaning that we want to manipulate the graphics by using a uh, an audio channel and um, the uh, the different volumes of the of the audio. So um, we're gonna like uh, look at how to how to extract some kind of or ex extract ex yeah uh, data from the audio um, to to use that in a in a meaningful way, and um, here we're actually like uh, mapping the, these to like different and different ways so we can like uh, use them on all these different things here. So I'm not gonna build this whole network. Uh, this isn't really necessary, I think. Um, this is just stuff I prepared, different sort of situations that you might come across where you think, okay, I want to make this audio reactive. So this is more probably for beginners than uh, intermediates or masters. <laughs> um, but yeah, might be interesting for the others as well. So I'm actually gonna just leave this network here and just go back here uh, where I have only the um, <coughs> the, the, the networks that we want to change. So um, if you want to have the whole network and really play with this, you can download it on Patreon. Otherwise, let's just go ahead and start. Okay, so I'm going to start with an audio file in. Of course, you can use uh, any kind of device in as well, but I'm just going to start with an audio file. Let's also add an audio device out so we can listen to it, but I'm going to bypass that. And then I'm going to move the middle mouse. I'm going to add a map from here because we just want to have one channel and we could also just go mono, but then we don't hear it on the audio device out. So let's go ahead and just combine these channels with average and um, use an audio spectrum here and an analyze. So I'm just going to leave the uh, audio spectrum as it is, the analyze as well. We're just going to leave that as average. It's a bit better than just adding uh, the analyze here, um, as you can see. So the average doesn't actually work, and um, the RMS power does work, but it's uh, not as smooth smooth as this. Okay, so now there's two. There's many ways, but I'm gonna show you two different ways how you can extract, like, in a way, meaningful data or like usable data. So one thing is the envelope math trick that I sh I've, I've showed before. So that's just adding an envelope and a math then adding the envelope under the, the input here in the math, combine these chops with divide and change the envelope width to like 10. And now we have a, a normalized channel, which we can look at with a trail. And um, this is always like nicely between zero and uh, one. It's always like mapped between these, these values instead of if we just look here, um, you know, between zero and something like that. So that that's a good way to 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 make the channel um, <coughs> be normalized. But uh, I really just want to have an on and off signal. So there's many ways again to do this, and um, one of them is actually I've recently had a, a beat detection workshop like last last weekend, and I'm gonna share a link uh, to to the. Uh, file for that or like the, the, the videos for that uh, as soon as that's out and um, you know that that's a good way to to have a look there uh, the other thing is that you can also just use um, the go to tools and just, just use the audio analysis from here and uh, you can output some channels that you can use in these cases as well so you have things like low mid and high and also like the kick snare and rhythm detection and for my beat detection that's uh, kick, snare, and hats, also rhythm, if you want to use it that way. So uh, yeah, just uh, so you know, that's possible. I'm going to show you a very simple way to like get a sort of on-off signal, which I also use in a big beat detection, which is simply a trigger. And um, yeah, it, after that, I'm going to show you a few different 
things as well. So for the trigger, um, let's go to our sustain here and go down with these. Go up with the sustain to one, go down with these. And then let's go to the trigger and we just want to define a uh, value. I'm just going to right click and reset this. Okay, it doesn't actually do much. So um, yeah, we might actually want to use this uh, here and just put it in, into the trigger. And now any t every time this value is above a certain threshold, we want this to turn on. So let's just change the threshold here to like 0.7 or something. And now you can now we can see it works uh, quite nicely. We might even want to go higher to like 0.9. So only like really when the kick hits, this goes up. So this is really mostly for kick heavy songs. So if we just have a listen here, this works pretty well. Um, yeah, so so that's a that's a nice way uh, to just very simply do that. Uh, you can also, <clears throat> yeah, but just a little hint for what 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 I did in the workshop is using different uh, audio filters and um, to to like get out different channels for the snare and the hats as well and some other tricks to make it more dynamic. Anyways, uh, that's one way. The other thing is you could also attach a limit to this and just change the quantize value to like floor and one and that's uh, doing a very similar thing so whatever you prefer here so these are two two ways another thing that doesn't actually ex extract audio directly but um you know you could zinc to the audio is the beat chop so um what this does is it just counts to like four, one, two, three, four, or whatever you have set here. So down here on the left, that's at the bottom left. That's very important. And also you set the tempo. So if you like set the tempo here to 120 and your song is 120 and you, you start the, those, like you start this, the song at, you know, zero, then uh, these should uh, zinc up and you can, there's some stuff you can change here about this. And you can also output different things. For example, uh, yeah, I don't know, the count isn't very helpful, but for example, the beat. So that goes up, but we just want to have a channel that goes off and on. So there's a little trick to do that. You can just add a logic. I don't know why I, I haven't really found it by maybe ramp. No, I mean, ramp beat is sort of the thing, the thing I'm, I'm looking for, but I just want to have like a pulse signal every time the beat hits. So I'm just going to change, like on the logic, I'm just going to change this to on when value changed. So every time this counts up, we get a little pulse here, which we could use instead of this channel, you know, if they were like zinced. The other thing is that, of course, you can link this to Ableton. Again, on the output, you have the same outputs as on the beat. So I could also uh, use the uh, beats here. Nope, um, the beat, not beats. Uh, and then this way you could zinc this to Ableton. And of course, we also have the TD Ableton here, which I cover in different uh, in different videos where you can uh, zinc a lot more stuff. So that would be another way. All right, so let's actually keep working. Uh, these are all not things we're actually gonna work with now. I just wanted to like let you know as this is, you know, make anything audio directive that this is sort of a way to go as well. Um, I'm just going to go with my trigger uh, version here and I'm going to add an alt to this by pressing alt N. I'm just going to call this like hub because this is sort of our point where we're just going to like go to a lot of different strains from. So I'm just going to color this by pressing C, like blue color, maybe, I don't know, orange color. And um, right, so over here, you don't have these. Um, if you want to, you know, as I said in the beginning, you can you can have this file, but really I just want to show you different approaches for different um, situations. So let's just see what's going on here. So let's say we have the circle. I'm going to display that in the background. Let's say I have the circle and I just want to make the radius change and the position change uh, based on our audio. So now we get this cool little zero uh, to one signal on and off so now well, all we need to do here is add a math and a null and uh, let's just call this like circle pause and let's just put this onto the radius and you know you can see okay that's a bit weird let us go to math and change the range so we saw 
where we're some, somewhere around 0.1. So let's just go to a range on the map here and change this to like 0.1 and 0.2 maybe. So it just like sort of pulsates. So again, um, like I'm, I'm dragging this on the radius instead of just one of these. So it changes for both. And there we go. So now you might notice, okay, wait, uh, this is cool, but I want to have some kind of transition from one state to the other. So I'm going to insert a lag here. And that should sort of, you know, that really smooths it out. Uh, now we have a new problem. And, um, you know, we're like nicely smoothing it out to po uh, 0.2 and 0.2 seconds, both on the attack and the release. Um, but now we're not really going, if we look at a trail here, we're not going to like 0 and 1 anymore because we're like filtering it so it doesn't get up anymore. So I'm just going to copy and paste our little envelope math trick because it also applies here. So I'm going to like put that here and use this instead and put that here. And now if I uh, add a trail, we can now see uh, our lagged value still goes from 0 to 1. So this is working pretty nicely. That's a, that's a good way to like normalize a lagged or like filtered value. This is a great trick, really. Um, cool. So we got that working. Now let's say every time the kick hits or you know our our data here, whatever that is, in the end um, goes from left to right. So uh, or we want to move the circle from left to right. So how do we do that? We can use, uh, we only have like a zero to one channel. Uh, I could just go ahead and you, with middle mouse, add a math here again, and a null, and call this circle. Oh, that is actually circle pause, sorry for, for that. This is actually called circle size. And I'm um, just gonna redo this again. This is called circle pause. Okay, and um, so now I could just, you know, change this to like minus 0.2 and 0.2. But uh, this is, this is going to look very strange. So every time this hits, it's like over there. And, uh, you know, that might be something you want to do. But what I want to do is like when a kick hits, it goes there. When a kick hits again, it goes back. And there's a very simple way to do that. Again, the magic of the logic chop. So we can just add a logic chop here and change the channel pre -OP to toggle. And now you can see every time this hits one, this is being inverted basically. So it jumps from zero to one and from one to zero. And uh, this way we can nicely go back and forth. And again, what we could do is we could add a lag here afterwards. So it sort of like smoothly fades from, from one to the other. I think that's a, yeah, that's a, that's a nice way to do that. All right, cool so much for the circle about the noise these are some of these te techniques are really something i've already shared before of course but uh, i think that's that's really not a problem so um what i want to do actually let's go up with this it's a bit of a mess but that's okay um i'm just gonna put that over here because we want to use this channel actually this nicely normalized lagged value um, let's from here. Let's add a math again. Another math. It's going to be a lot of maths, and a speed, and a null. And I'm going to call this noise movement because what I want to do now. We have this noise here. We can type in abs time dot seconds, and then this noise is nicely animated, but of course not to the music. So um, or you know to our incoming channel. So let's use this channel and uh, put that on here instead and now you can see i'm gonna turn on the music to just to you can see this nicely i'm gonna turn this off turn this on and now you can see the noise is moving to um, the music and this is really something i use a lot so you can use this in feedback loops which we're also going to look at later um, but yeah you can really use this anywhere and of course you can also use this on on the x axis or uh, on the y axis so it like moves down or up so I can just multiply this by minus one. Oops, and then it moves down. Um, or of course you could change the math here. So uh, yeah, to, to change the, the strength, let's go to the math and I make this two, for example, or like 20, and then you're gonna see it goes crazy. So yeah, 
that's that's the way you change the, the noise movement. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and bypass this again. I don't I've listened to that song way too many times. Right, one thing actually here <laughs> for the very beginners, if you don't wanna use this song, of course you can just click the plus here and load in a different song of your choice. Okay, so for the noise, I'm not going to change much more here. Of course, you can do the same thing as we do here with the size that you can change the uh, period and, and all that stuff. But I guess you, you sort of know that. All right. Um, the next thing is that you can see here, we have uh, three different op operators and we want to switch between them. So every time the kick hits, I want to use a different one of these and then start from the beginning again. So we have this, then we have this and with that. And these can be really as many as we want. So um, what we want to do now is we want to use this channel right here from the hub with middle mouse, click count, add a count, not constant, sorry, count. And um, as you can see, every time this channel hits, this is being counted up. And for this and uh, also for the logic chop, chop, it's important that this is actually a value that goes on like off and on you know like zero and one that we have these two states because if we connected this for example then you can see it doesn't count up because um this this is like smoothed out so it really needs to be like a, a hard cut on off signal to for this to work or like a pulse you know so um now this just counts up more and more uh, that's not really what i want i only have three inputs so i'm gonna limit this with a loop so we want zero, one, two, and then start again. So let's pulse this because it sometimes has like this arrow there. And uh, then just add a null. Let's call this switch count or something. And let's click on our switch, make this active and drag that on the index. And now you can see every time the kick hits or our channel hits, we switch between different inputs. Cool. So, um, <clears throat> right, the next thing uh, we want to look at is uh, that we might just have like a, an image file. I'm not going to go crazy with the image file, just one little thing here. For example, you can just add a level, then you can uh, just go with the, with this actually, yeah, with the logic I think is cool. You might just want to like, you might actually just use this channel here. Uh, we don't actually need a math. We can just use a null. Just call this um, invert. And go to our level, make this active, and drag this onto the invert parameter. So every time the kick hits, we're like switching between an inverted and a not inverted state. So that would be one way. There's, of course, many, many ways with blur and emboss and mirroring and GLSL and whatever. Um, you know that uh, and, and and like these ways in in which you can like make this audio reactive um, or change the the input but that's just uh, one thing I wanted to show the other thing is and I, I also made a longer video about that but it's just you know having a video file that we play with that kick or you know that channel <laughs> so this is similar to um, to the noise movement so what we have here, if we usually is with sequential, it's just gonna play the audio at whatever speed we define here. Um, so, you know, that works nicely. We can also lock this to timeline and then change it using this. It's kind of hard going in reverse, so I wouldn't recommend that. And, right, so what we wanna do is set this to specify index. You're gonna, yours is just gonna like go up. Mine, mine I already changed that. So what you can just do now let us just go ahead and copy this noise here. And um, let's just use it and see what happens. So I'm just going to call this like um, video index. Let's go to our movie file in here and use this uh, on the index as a chop reference. And uh, let's just display that in the background. You can see barely anything happens really. We really need to map remap this to something a lot higher. So like Let's just set this to like 10 and 100. And then now you can see it's not very smooth because the image doesn't have, uh, this doesn't have a very high uh, frame rate. Do we actually see that here? Uh, I don't think so. 
but um, yeah, it probably has a frame rate of like 30 or something around that. So if you want to really have a smooth video, you're going to need some kind of higher frame, frame rate for this to work. This 10 we added, like if we just set it to zero, then it's just going to be like, if there is no, no data coming in here, and it's just going to be static. So if we set this to 50, it's always going to like flow a bit and then just be like multiplied sort of by, by the... Okay, so it actually looks a bit better for this case. I'm going to link the video in the description as well. We look into de look into that in detail. All right. Next for the render network for render setup, just a, I, I just have like a sphere and a, some noise and a fong to like displace this. And uh, first off, we can just go ahead and use the noise movement on our noise that I have set here as a both the color map and a height map. So we can already see this is uh, working pretty nicely. And the other thing is that we might wanna like change the display scale. So this is a very simple one where we can just go ahead and use another map from here. Change this to like, I don't know, what, what display scale are we at? 0.4, so maybe like 0.3 and 0.7 or something. And then just add a null call this displacement and let's use this channel on the display scale and there we go so that would be a simple way another thing I just noticed something you could do is you could a add a null here and again I don't want to <laughs> listen to this again and again um, is add a null here and add this as a constraint too I'm actually going to add another null. I'm just going to make these like smaller. So I'm just going to add the second null as a look at. And the first null, we can now go ahead and change this to abs time dot frame. And now the camera moves around the object. So if we don't have to look at, um, it actually yeah, it actually works without the look at. So just screw the look at. Um, just use this null as a constraint too on the cam. Make sure you have the cam selected and then drag the null on there. And now we could uh, change this uh, with um, our beloved, thing. maybe this even works if we're just lazy and use this. Oops, wrong thing. Yeah, let, let's make a new one just to be <laughs> clean here. Um, so let's, let's call this cam movement or something, moment. And uh, change this to like 1 and 100. And then put that on the null. Or um, let's actually change this to like, I don't know, 500. So now the, the cam moves around the object every time the kick hits. So again, just quickly. Cool. So generally, uh, I would recommend, I, I always did it with like chops and like, you know, changing these translates, but we really just need a constraint to null and uh, just change that uh, RY uh, to, to rotate the camera around an object. Okay. Of course, you can add more stuff to the, to the material and all, all that, but let's move on. I've got a simple render network, uh, instancing network, I mean down here and um, <clears throat> as you can see we're like uh, okay this, this ah right so <laughs> this is doing this because we're using the cam here as well so let's actually just make a camera too and uh, use that instead and uh, on this cam let us not use the constraint too okay there we go and uh, now you can see I just used some noise to like position them and a ramp to position them on the Y. And uh, you're gonna see why I used a ramp here, not another noise in a second. Uh, first thing, um, let's just use again this uh, channel to to make this all reactive. So the first thing is we might again just wanna go to our noise movement and animate that, animate that. And <laughs> the other thing is that we might wanna use uh, I might want to use something like the speed thing here again to move through this ramp because we can like face this to like go up and down. So that's generally a very good trick if you want to like move stuff in uh, in 3D space in a looping manner. You can just use a ramp and a phase. 
same on the T Z axis. And uh, so let's just copy and paste this and call this um, uh, like phase. And uh, let's change this to one and two or something. Let's just see what happens. I'm not not sure which ones are perfect here. Uh, looks pretty all right. Mm, let's actually change this to like 0.2 and 1.5. So now you can see it. They're like moving down every time. Um, our channel is hitting. We can also move a bit closer so we don't see like the the very top. Might want to go down with that scale of the points. All right, so the other thing is we, we can always, if we're using instancing, but also of course in a feedback loop or really anything anywhere else, we can always use the audio spectrum and somehow composite that into there. So we can just uh, add a null with our middle mouse from the audio spectrum so we have that over here and um, let's just call this spec and let's right click here chop to top right let us change this to fit to square um, then there's of course many ways to do this uh, a very simple one is to just use a noise and uh, output it just noise and then input that in no like use this channel in here so we're getting the same resolution. So we're just sending it to noise, but we're just like piping in the resolution. And then just use the uh, chop to here. And um, now we have like a noise that's reacting here. And now we can just use this, call it scale, for example. That would, it's just one way to, to go about this. And um, put that in here and use uh, the corresponding channel. And now, as you can see, um, everything is reacting to the audio. So like the particle size, you might want to go ahead and add like a blur in here just to make this like a bit less uh, jumpy. And now it's quite smooth and it's reacting to the music. So it's really like just a simple setup to uh, make this sort of particle system. All right, last but not least, let's go ahead and look at this feedback which is just white at this point. And um, yeah, there's a very simple way to, to work with feedback loops and audio reactivity because we have this pulse button and we can just pulse that uh, when the kick or whatever is hitting. So again, we can just use from here, we can, from our hub null, we can just use that channel because it's already an on and off signal. Let's just call this reset. T reset. And uh, make this active and use it on the pulse. Just drag it on there, chop reference. And every time our channel hits, or our kick, or you know, I don't know how many times <laughs> I'm saying this, uh, our entire feedback system is uh, changed, which is cool. We can uh, also, of course, we could use, for example, if we go from here, our normalized lagged kind of thing, we can add a math from there. And um, okay, now <clears throat> let's call this like this place. And um, we have like this UV weight. So we might want to change this from like 1 to 0.998 or something like that. Something very really small and put that on the UV weight. Well, maybe 0.9. That's also a nice little effect we, we get there. We can also make this colorful. And yeah, as you uh, might know, watching Paketa 12s and my tutorials, you can do a lot in feedback loops. And I'm gonna share something soon as well about that, some more. And uh, yeah, this is an easy way to manipulate that to make it audio reactive. All right, so I'm gonna like turn this off and bypass this. So generally saying, what we're really just doing here, we're just looking at the the different parameters that we want to change. And as I said, you can technically change any parameter. You can also change this monochrome. You can sell these, these sort of buttons. You could even change this list if you wanted to, because in the end, these are really just numbers as well. So index numbers of that list. And um, you just want to see, okay, what sort of channel do I need? So do I need a channel that just goes like on and off and or like between a certain range as we have here? So like, do I map it between 
minus point something and point some uh, point something you know you want to like just have a very simple zero one you or you want to have like something that animates over time so like this noise or like uh, this this video file so so a value that doesn't just go from zero and one and then back but you know constantly um, adds to itself with a speed or do you uh, you know uh, want to use the spectrum for um, you know to change something so you can either use just the spectrum chop in a chop instancing network or you know create this chop to and you could also use some displacement here uh, to make this look a bit less you know just like an audio spectrum which it is and um, to make I don't know some some cool effects there so really it's just about finding out what channel do I need and then how do I get this channel so in this case we're just um, making this channel by uh, using a trigger a very simple way um, or you could also use this limit uh, trick that I showed you and uh, all these other things and uh, I'm gonna also share uh, the beat detection thing it's not free but you know it's uh, it's something you can also look into if you wish all right also I'm working on my algorithm tool once in a while and um, there this will all be that's sort of based on all of these things so just getting the sense of okay I can use uh, an incoming chop and really actually use that on anything you can you can manipulate anything that's really the power of touch designer of course this doesn't have to just be audio this could also be leap motion this could also be Kinect anything really but I just wanted you I, I, I've been asked this so many times so I just wanted to make like this video about audio reactivity all right long video um, I'll be seeing myself out I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed this video and if you want to support me if you want to have more videos and stuff uh, you can check out my patreon Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.